Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to be building a snapshotter service, something that is going to be creating asynchronous projections. So if you didn't watch the previous video, we essentially set up the different parts, again code is in the description, you can take a look at them, but we write events to the database and then we have a component in the background that is processing those events to create view models that should then be presented on the UI. We're not going to build a snapshotter that handles all possible situations and scenarios. We're going to build the simple idea and I'm going to get the rumble out of the way where I talk about all the different possibilities and different scenarios that you need to potentially handle when you're building this snapshotter. We will also be using distributed locking. So if you don't know what that is, uh, you know, this video might be useful to you. The snapshotter in essence is a background service that sits there and waits for events from the database. At the moment, uh, the snapshotter is going to be part of our API. Uh, as APIs tend to take high traffic, they tend to scale. So basically, we now have a distributed problem. We have multiple events coming in for the same projection, and they get handled by different instances of snapshotters. Let's say we have three events. First and third event, out of order, get picked up by snapshotter one, and the second event gets picked up by snapshotter two. Snapshotter two is very slow to process the second event. So snapshotter one processes the first event, builds the projection, and then the third event has a dependency on the second event, which is now slow. So we fail to build the projection and you know, all kinds of error handling has to happen here. The second event then succeeds and potentially if you have these disaster recovery mechanisms implemented in your snapshotter, eventually you will get a valid projection. You know, you don't just eject events that look invalid you will have to distinct is it a valid event is it failing because the projection is not in the correct state you're basically dealing with concurrency issues and race conditions so and they're in a distributed scenario so it's not the easiest thing at this point you can say well let's go ahead take this background service let's take it out into its own service and we're going to share the underlying projection models and events between the api and the snapshotter potentially an easy decision to jump to on the surface of it. However, you know, it will come with its own repository problems with build pipelines, etc. management, infrastructure management of these services. I know for some people it may seem like peanuts, but when you have hundreds of these and they're, you know, all over the place, it's uh, something to consider. So let's say we have this standalone service and it's reading events. Uh, what's going to happen after is, uh, you know, your event load might drastically increase and uh, the one snapshotter instance is no longer going to be enough. You're going to need multiple ones and you're back at square one where you're faced with this problem that you have to solve. This is essentially where I'm going to show you how to solve this problem using a distributed lock. You can also solve this problem using the actor model. But essentially the easy solution looks like this. We have many snapshotters all part of the API and we only want one to function. So we say that snapshotter is going to acquire the lock, the rest of them aren't going to do anything. So we have only one snapshotter processing all of the events. We can have many APIs and a single snapshotter working. If we end up in a situation where we have multiple snapshotters, we can basically take the amount of projections that we have. So let's say we're producing a hundred view models. We would divide these models. Maybe we have some kind of configuration of how we divide these models. Maybe some are always grouped together on a single machine. But essentially, you would acquire a lock per projection. So you're trying to distribute the load across your snapshot cluster. And at that point, that's kind of where you have to say, all right, which projections get built more? Where do I have more events? And you know, you got to use your brain to figure out I can't just cover all scenarios. And this is why we're not building the most proper thing. I'm going to show you how to set up the snapshot, or I'm going to show you how to do locks. So you can apply this to similar or these problems whenever you run into them. So from the previous video, we have our linkpad script with pre-baked code. I explained everything in the previous video of how it built and how it functions. So go watch that and link somewhere there. Anyway, uh, we're going to create a get and a post, get for projection, post for uh, posting events, and then we'll create a background service for the snapshotter. Here I'm creating the post endpoint where I'm going to accept a string so I can just vary the type of events that I'm going to be saving to the database. We're going to go to the write script and we're basically going to copy the whole implementation here and just paste the implementation here. Getting all the imports and making this function asynchronous, I will interchange these events based on the type that is being supplied. This is what this is going to look like. So depending on what string I supply here, I'm going to have different events created and then I'm going to store them. Again, somebody made a comment on the previous video about me not using proper syntax. 
to populate this command. I mean, the video was a, about a completely different topic, but he decided to pick this moment to be upset. Don't be like that guy. If you're watching videos about event sourcing, you already know about SQL injection and not to store your strings in plain text, uh, hard coded, unencrypted, you know, just the standard stuff these days. So we got our map post, then we want to query for projections. For this, I'm going to go to the read script. I'm just going to copy this and put it into this map get. In the end here on the exist, if it exists, let's return the record. If it doesn't, let's return an empty string. So we can write events, we can read the projection. And now for the fun part, we're going to build the background service, which is going to be churning through these events as they are coming in. For this, we're going to have to go to the builder services and we will add a hosted service. Uh, this will have to be our snapshotter or, you know, projector. If we want to get a little, you know, I don't know, fancy. I don't know if this is considered fancy, uh, but there we have our projector. I don't know why it didn't just give it a background service here, but, or an I hosted service, but there we go. So this error goes away uh, as long as we give it an implementation of a, a I hosted service interface, background service on the back of it implements the I hosted service interface. So although this is a little bit more of a simpler thing to implement with the other interface, you get a couple of things. We're going to go into the listen script. Uh, we are just going to grab the main function first, copy all of this, place it into this execute async, make this asynchronous. And then we're going to have to have the handle event. We can remove this dump. I'll just go here, grab the rest of this uh, and all the space at the bottom. Uh, put it into this class. Again, if you have proper services, you know, you dependency inject your dependencies, manage your connections. Don't tell me this is not proper because I said at the beginning of the video. Uh, again, import the stuff that you need. Uh, I think that is all. Remove all of the dumps and stuff like that. Yeah. Finally, let's get a logger in here just so we can see things happening. And we'll just pop a log right at the beginning. So log information and we'll say... Uh, projector started. Let's close the script. Uh, let's open up the terminal and we're going to go to the snapshotter and uh, well, we're just going to build it and run it. I'm going to use .NET watch for running it. We can see the projector starts quite early and well, because we don't really have a projection right now, uh, the payload that we receive here is well, I mean, it's, it's just empty and uh, nothing to see here. I will now pull up Insomnia to hit this HTTP endpoint and, you know, add my different events. So let's uh, send the added cart event. So we're just going to send that. That is OK. And uh, it doesn't look like uh, anything's been processed. So this is partly where we can uh, actually go back to the snapshotter. And when we're handling this event or when we are receiving it here, let's grab our logger and let's again just log information that we are processing a event right and again don't come at me with uh, you're not logging properly they use a tube of memory whatever uh, so the hot reload there is successful uh, let's send another event this time let's send the shopping information just there and then we can see the event being processed uh, let's go ahead and add our table and uh, yep so that's there let's go ahead and see this in the browser there we go. So our product, our uh, street information and user ID, etc. And uh, just in case you can't see it, you know, we're essentially done with part one. We have a snapshotter as part of our API. We are now going to go into the scenario where we have two APIs, two snapshotters. Only one of them needs to be working. What do we do? As I've said before, we are going to need a distributed lock for this solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the stuff for reading. So specifically this command right here and actually including the read, I'm going to need the read. And before we do uh, subscribing to any notifications or anything like that, uh, we want to basically say, all right, is anybody else already listening for notifications? If not, I want to start listening. If somebody's already listening, uh, let's back off. And I guess it will be worth it just seeing what's going to happen if multiple snapshotters are listening. I'm going to run this on port 5000. I'm going to get the classic file as in use because this is watching. So let's start this on port 5000 and we'll start this on port 5001. Both of the services are started, both on different ports. Hopefully not a surprise. Uh, let's go ahead and send an event like uh, something here that that's just going to purchase a product. And again, that is not a port that I'm working on anymore. 
this bit processed an event even though that we've sent to 5000 and this bit processed an event both of them are processing the same events if one machine does it faster than the other one automatic race condition you don't want them both processing events identical ones in order out of order that's just not a good situation so at this moment we're just going to block one machine using a lock uh, later on you should understand that if we're using a lock id per machine you can use a lock id per projection as i said right before this demonstration we want to do this before we start listening for anything and this is partly where we want to say all right somebody's already listening i'm going to stop and i'm going to check back in like 5 10 whatever seconds and the situation that you may run in there is that for that time that you're not listening and a machine has broken down and you're picking up the events you will need to account for all of this time where you weren't listening and both of us one of the snapshot was down and nobody was picking up events and this time you will need to go and requery for that time nevertheless uh, let's go ahead and create a while loop uh, and uh, i probably already lost the clipboard for this command let's grab it uh, we will put it right over here just gonna use an infinite loop here do a little bit of formatting uh, this is always going to exist so we don't really need to store this but the actual command that we're going to be using is called pg try advisory lock and this is a function where we just supply an id this is just going to be id1 and you know your projections are going to should have like different ids etc or come up with some other strategy but essentially uh, try in this case means we try to grab a lock if uh, it's already locked we return straight away we do not sit there and wait for it to be available we get it back with the result of false from the reader if uh, the lock is available so we actually grab it the result is going to return true so let's go ahead and create a variable var got lock and this is not a function we get from the reader get boolean from position zero if we got a lock let's go ahead and break so we break out of the while loop and we go on listening and processing events otherwise what we're going to do is wait for five seconds i'll add some additional login just so we know what's happening for one message lock is acquired for the other message lock is busy we're gonna keep spinning uh, let's go ahead and uh, stop both of these applications and let's restart them the first one we're gonna see that the lock is acquired for the other one we're gonna see it's keep keeps polling for the lock to be free essentially let's go ahead and post a product right so this is not processing any events again it's stuck in this loop and this has processed the event now what we're going to do is we're going to simulate this snapshotter goes down right and then this snapshotter is going to pick up the lock we can see this acquires the lock and now if new events start being sent in and uh, you know if this is separated again you have load balancer etc this is why this is not a proper proper solution i can never do those those would take days if not weeks but yeah anyway uh, this other service now starts processing this event but there it is so one service goes down uh, the other one picks up the lock and you still have the concurrency safety and uh, you have essentially disaster recovery if you can call it that again i'm not showing you how to handle that time where the one is down and the other one is waiting for the lock like the four or five seconds how important is that if you have tons of event probably uh, how to split projections uh, between snapshotters if you want to see that leave a comment this will be it for this video thank you very much for watching uh, if you have any questions leave in the comment section as well don't forget to like subscribe all that jazz a big thank you to my patrons who are supporting me that really helps a lot don't forget to check out all the links in the description stay healthy out there and have a good day